Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well today. So, uh, it's been a while since I've made a vlog once again. So, um, today I'm gonna do a vlog, but something a little bit more fun with it. Um, last week, uh, was the huge, uh, announcement throughout the week that is the casting for Free Eternal Summer. That's the second season of Free that Funimation picked up. Uh, and last week was the full announcement of the dub cast. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go through and kind of recap um, the casting announcement a little bit. Uh, go from each day, Monday to Sunday, uh, talk about who I originally predicted, talk about who actually got cast, talk about my opinion on it, as well as my opinion on a couple other things that happened throughout the week in regards to um, the free dub announcements. So um, yeah. I have an outline on my computer, uh, and I'm just gonna scooch a tiny bit because I want to put pictures and be all fancy for this. So, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's get this started, shall we? So, first things first, um, came the cast announcement for Monday. Uh, now Monday, Funimation just decided to go to the I Iwatobi Swim Club right off the bat because it was the announcement for the English voice of Rey. Uh, Ray, as some of you probably know uh, from one of my Lela 10 videos, is actually my favorite character from the series. And, um, very fabulous in a bit of a sense. Uh, <laughs> first season definitely proved that. As far as my predictions go, I originally predicted that it would go to Ian Sinclair. Now, I actually had two, uh, choice, two picks of mine. But my first choice was Ian Sinclair. Now, Ian Sinclair, you may not know, uh, he voices Dandy from Space Dandy, uh, Brooke from One Piece, uh, Hatsumi from Shiki, and Horiko from Toriko. Uh, but specifically, I chose Sinclair as my choice because of um, his role as Dandy, as well as um, Tatsumi from Shiki. Uh, because both of them are rather energetic, uh, they have they f uh, kind of fluctuate a little bit. Talks to me more so than Dandy uh, in terms of vocal tone and quality, uh, and it just seemed like a fun role that Sinclair could take and just play with it, have some fun with it. Didn't happen. Uh, instead, it actually went to my second choice, uh, which would be J. Michael Tatum. Tatum, if you have been living under a rock and do not know who he is. Um, he is, God, who is he? He is <laughs> Lawrence from Spice and Wolf. He is uh, Sebastian from Black Butler. He is Kyoya from Owen High School Host Club. Um, so he definitely has that range. Uh, he's been around for a while. He's done a similar series uh, to Free a little bit, uh, that being Oran. I didn't pick Tatum as my first choice, mostly because um, it just seemed too obvious, uh, too, too obvious of casting, and I was kind of trying to think outside the box with that. Tatum I have no issues with. He's going to be fantastic in the role um, for multiple reasons. Like I said, it's, it seems like a natural fit for him. Also, I think this is going to be hilarious um, because some people are aware that there are kind of some homoerotic tendencies in free uh, between the characters and um, for Rain in particular because he's a fabulous butterfly and he's wonderful uh, it's funny that Tatum actually is voicing this character because Tatum is actually gay I apologize for the three girls who may not have known this and just broke in your dreams I apologize I was shocked too but um, I feel like this is gonna be a fun one for him uh, considering the series, considering Ray's character, <laughs> and no issues with me and casting of Tatum as Ray. I just think it's absolutely perfect. I just didn't pick him as a first choice because it just seemed too obvious, to be completely honest. So, uh, there's, there's that. That was Monday. When Tuesday came around, um, since Ray was day one casting announcement, I had a feeling we were gonna go into another member of the Iwatobi Swim Club, and of course, that was going to be Nagisa. Nagisa was a logical choice to announce for Tuesday. My prediction for Nagisa was actually um, Josh Greeley. Now, Josh Greeley, if you do not know who that is, he's played Kurnosuke in um, Princess Jellyfish. 
He's played Armin in Attack on Titan. He is Mao, if I'm remembering the name correctly. He's the lead character in Devil as a Part-Timer. Um, he's been doing a lot of roles lately. And I picked Greeley for Nagisa um, because, one, I felt like it would be a fun show for him to do. I don't remember anything in his immediate repertoire that comes to mind um, that is similar to Free. And um, I felt like the vocal quality would translate pretty well uh, for him as Nagisa. And also because really, and like a couple more people you'll see when you mention this, he's in the immediate Funimation pool when it comes to, in terms of voice actors that they can hire and uh, audition and hire for roles. But <laughs> again, my prediction is obviously wrong. And um, instead, who we have as Nagisa is Greg Ayers. Now, Greg Ayers, if you do not know who he is, he uh, is Ginta from Devon Wonderland. He is, I don't know the character's name off the top of my head, but he's uh, the lead character in Back Mongolian Chop Squad. He's one of the Hat Hitachi twins from Oran High School Host Club. I believe he is Kaoru. It's hard to tell them apart. I think he's Kaoru. Um, if I remember right, and he's playing Nagisa. Now, I didn't immediately think it was going to be Greg Ayers. I thought about it for like five seconds, but then I was like, what's the likelihood of that? Because, um, he currently actually splits his time between Funimation and Sentai Filmworks. Um, most, I've seen more announcements for dubs with him, with Sentai rather than Funimation. So, I felt that the likelihood of him being a part of this one was really, really slim so I didn't pick him, but looking at it, seeing the announcement, it's definitely a natural fit, uh, considering the vocal quality that Nagisa has and the specific vocal quality that Ayers has. Um, it's, it's kind of a natural fit here. Um, I don't see any issues with it, uh, none in the least. Um, I just didn't exactly think of it at the top of my head because for me, um, some of Ayers' roles can be mixed depending on the show you're watching. Um, like he, I loved him in Oran. Speed Grapher was an interesting one for me, uh, but I enjoyed it. Rook from Firebrain, that's a bit of a tricky one to me, but you can see what I'm saying. Um, it's mixed depending on the role and the show he's in. Uh, so again, Greg Ayers is Nagisa. I'm totally fine with this. It seems like a natural fit for him. Um, and I think this one's, like Tatum, is gonna be like a walk in the park, to be completely honest, so no complaints here. Wednesday! Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday. Um, Wednesday was definitely an interesting and very unexpected one. Very much one of the unexpected uh, castings throughout the entire week. Because I did not think of this person at all, in terms of it. Uh, so Wednesday was the announcement for Makoto. With Makoto, I actually had no predictions originally. Um, the reason for this was because, uh, considering what I know about the first season of Free and part of the, and at least the second, and some of the second season, I actually haven't finished it as of now, but, um, considering what I know about Makoto and his character, I had a very hard time coming up with some prediction, and I wasn't the only one. Um, a lot of people I've talked to, um, could not think of anything, uh, any voice actor who could work who could fit in that role. And here comes the unexpected twist. Makoto is actually being voiced by Johnny Young Bosch. If you do not know who Johnny Young Bosch is, he's in a lot of stuff. Um, he's Vash from Trigun. He is Ichigo from Bleach. He is Artemis in the new Sailor Moon dub. He is, God, Renton from Edeka 7. Uh, he's just done a lot of stuff and he's very well known. Again, it was completely unexpected um, because from my knowledge, um, from what I can tell, um, Bosch is based in LA, where I'm guessing, and I'm and if you want to correct me if I'm wrong, I believe um, studi uh, the uh, studios, the dubbing studios for like um, Viz Media and Aniplex are specifically based out there, uh, while Sentai and uh, Funimation, I believe, are still are just Texas. So, as you can see, it was completely unexpected. After thinking about it, letting it kind of mellow for a few minutes, I believed that that was actually going to be a decent fit for it. Um, thinking about his 
repertoire and his, vocal, and his voice in general, because he, like Ayers, he has that specific vocal quality um, and vocal tone, and will, making it work for Makoto, I don't think is going to be an issue. Um, I did question it for a minute, I'm just like, what? It, just, it didn't line up for me for like a couple minutes. But uh, thinking about it, sitting down on it, and considering everything going on, um, I got the feeling Funimation was like a lot of us, at, a lot of us who were trying to predict who Makoto was going to be, who was voicing Makoto, and it's a difficult one to try and settle and pick someone for. I guess they invited people outside of Texas, uh, they invited some of the LA based actors to audition, and obviously we have John Ann Bosch coming as Makoto. Um, no issues for me on that one. Uh, I think it's going to be a good fit. I think he's going to do well. Uh, and yeah. Makoto! Hooray! When Thursday rolled around, um, I originally expected uh, casting announcements for Sosuke and Go. Um, and I felt that what was going to end up happening was Rin and Haru, since they're technically seen as the two major characters of the series, they would be announced over the weekend. Uh, that was not the case, and instead on Thursday, we got the announcement for Haru. Uh, and with Haru, my original prediction, as well as everybody else's, I believe, at this point, and at least everyone that I talked to, was actually going to be Micah Solasad. Um, Solasad, if you don't know who that is, he, uh, Soul from Soul Eater. He's Guy from Guilty Crown. I'm just thinking of things off the top of my head. He is in Kamisama Kiss. I forget which character, um, but it was freaking adorable. Uh, he's, he's been used quite a bit lately to, to the people I have spoken to. Um, he tends to be referred to as someone whose voice is very similar to Johnny Bosch's. After Makoto uh, was announced the day before and Johnny Bosch was attached to it, I kind of sat there about and thought about the likelihood of both of them being in the same dub because um, their vocal quality is very similar to each other, very, very extremely si similar. I've talked to one person in particular and she was like, well, they were both in Eleka 7 AO, but I'm just kind of sitting there like, but that's a father-son relationship, so that kind of makes sense in that regard. When Bosch was announced as Marco to the day before, I kind of was hesitant that it w that Haru was not going to be Soul Solid, and I was correct on that assumption. Because instead, and in this, and today, Thursday, is actually the day where I started questioning it a little bit, uh, the dub choice, a little bit. Because Haru in this dub is actually going to be played by Todd Haberkorn. Haberkorn, if you do not know who he is, he's played Natsu in Fairy Tale. He is Jedite in the new Sailor Moon dub. He um, was this crazy fairy king guy in the first season of SAO. Haberkorn has done a lot recently, and at this point, I believe he's in LA, um, considering he's also branching out into American cartoons uh, and video games and other things like that. So I think at this point, he's in LA. Um, why I'm not sure and why I'm a little hesitant of Haberkorn as Haru. With Haru, he's very standoffish. He can be very closed off sometimes. Uh, I don't want necess to say, necessarily say introverted for, for Haru, but um, he kind of comes off that way. He's perceived that way. Having Haberkorn as Haru is definitely going to be interesting to see. This is when I started thinking also in my head, who is directing this dub because this is what it's going to come down to in order for Haberkorn to have a good performance uh, in this dub. And obviously we don't have that announcement as of that Thursday, whatever, we'll find out soon enough. Um, so I think it's possible. It's just going to depend on the director and depend on the direction that they go with Haru and his portrayal in the English dub. <sighs> Definitely going to be interesting because um, for Haberkorn, he, um, he's very, oh god, what's the right way to put it? I mean, I'm looking at like Natsu and, um, looking at like Natsu and, oh, he's an Oron, by the way. He's the other Hitachi twin. He's the Hikaru to heirs as Kaoru. Um, looking at roles like Oron, like Fairy Tail, and then looking at some of the recent stuff he's done. Um, Sword Art Online, glorious, and I loved it. Um, and from the clips and the one or two episodes I saw of the new Sailor Moon dub, 
his work as Jedite is actually pretty good. It's not, it's not bad. I like it. Um, so that's why I'm thinking it's possible for him to pull off Haru. Um, it just depends on the director. This was also the day where um, I started thinking about something interesting. Um, on the image uh, promotion, uh, image announcement things that Funimation put on their Tumblr and on their site, introducing the characters and who the, who's playing them, specifically for Tatum, Ayers, and Tabricorn. Um, they also listed some of their previous roles. All three of them list their roles for Oren High School Host Club. Here's the reason why I'm bringing this up and why I keep mentioning their Oren roles throughout this video. And I thought it would be hilarious at the possibility of there being a dub reunion, an Oran English dub reunion in free. And that thought came across my mind Thursday after Capricorn was confirmed as Haru. So honestly, I just thought it would be hilarious. And I was just sitting there like, one, but the likelihood of that happening is slim, but we'll see how the rest of the week goes. Then came Friday and the announcement of Basic, essentially the other main character of the series, that being Rin. Um, with Rin, uh, it's definitely an interesting one to talk about. <laughs> You'll see why in a minute. My uh, prediction for Rin was actually Eric Vale. Now, Vale, if you don't know who he is, uh, he's Sanji from One Piece, he's Loki from Fairy Tail, he's done a variety of things. He's Yuki Soma from Verse Basket, which I learned about over the summer. That was weird. He's also done Beckman Golding Top Squad alongside Greg Ayers. He was the other major character, I believe. And he also is a Cashier from Cashier Sins, which is something I still need to watch. Um, the reason why I picked Vale uh, for Rin was partly because slight fangirling. Uh, slight. But um, really the big reason um, was because I felt with... Um, his tone of voice, his vocal quality, and some of the work that he's done previously. Um, this would be an interesting fit. It would definitely be different considering the recent work he's done. I mean, Sanji and Loki are both love-struck puppies, in a sense. Uh, looks like puppy dogs, in a sense. Um, and he's also had other roles where he was kind of the pervert of the cast. So, <laughs> I felt that, um, this would definitely be different for him, uh, as of late, excuse my words, as of late. I can talk, I swear. And considering, like, some of his other work, I mean, he's Yuki freaking Selma from First Basket. He's done Cashersons, which I still have to see. Um, he did Bang 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 Chop Squad, which I saw some episodes for, and I thought he was great. Um, so that was the reason why I picked, um, Eric Vale for Rin. And you know... You know how I said with Habercorn, uh, that was the first day where I felt a little bit iffy? Friday's announcement made me kind of, um, flip tables just a tiny bit. Uh, but I calmed down after a little bit, a little while, because, um, <laughs> the person who was cast as Rin is Vic Mignogna. Vic Mignogna, if you've been living under a rock again, uh, he's Edward Elric from the Full Metal Alchemist franchise. He is Tamaki from Oran High School Host Club. Uh, he's, and recently he's, um, done Carnival and, uh, Level E. I believe Level E was released two, maybe three years ago now. Uh, so that's still pretty recent for him. Um, but he's also done some smaller roles recently with Attack on Titan and Zora Online. This is the first time throughout the, the week of the announcements where my opinion on this casting is that I do not see it working. Min Vic Mignogna is a interesting, again, very specific vocal quality, very specific voice, uh, like Ayers, like, like all of them, really, like Ayers, like Bosch, like Tatum, like Habercorn, all of them. They all have spe specific uh, voices that you can remember, just in like five seconds flat. I got a little salty. Um, to be perfectly honest, I did not want him anywhere near the main characters, the main cast. Um, I did not write him off the dub completely. Honestly, I thought it would be hilarious if he was the, uh, boy's swim coach. I thought that would be the most hilarious thing in the world. Uh, so that was really the only role that I would be moderately okay with. Um, for Rin, I don't like it. Um, I don't see it working. However, 
when I rewatched the series in the dub, prove me wrong if there's the off chance that he, Vic Mignon specifically watches this video. Prove me wrong. Just for now, I'm sticking with the opinion that's not gonna work. It's, I don't see it working. Um, I mean, theater background, I've sat in, in some casting for, I've been an actor for a while. For me, this just doesn't work. I can't see it working with Rin, but I do, I do offer the chance for Vic Mignogna to prove me wrong, to show me that this can work, that he can do great with the role. I, I welcome the challenge. I welcome it. Very much so. Um, but for now, I am sticking to that opinion that it's not gonna work. Back to the Oron reunion thing for a second here, because obviously at this point, we have Vic Mignogna hanging out in the cast, and we have four people from Oron. So at this point in the game, we are missing, uh, if we wanted a full reunion, we are missing, um, Travis Willingham, who played Morty, uh, Lucy Christian, who's played Honey, and, uh, oh god, I almost, Haruhi, uh, who, uh, Caitlin Glass voiced, and, um, those are the three we're missing if we wanted to have a full reunion, and there's actually a few characters that could fit. I mean, we still have Sosuke and Go to go through, um, and there's also actually, um, the homeroom teacher of Haru and Makoto, um, Ama Amakata, maybe? Yes, Amakata. Uh, names. Hooray. Outlines, they help. Um, so if we had these three there, and they were cast, it would be the funniest thing in the world. I would roll on the floor laughing at the whole reunion thing coming to reality. And there was a moment Friday night where somebody caused a stir on Twitter, and that was Travis Wallingham uh, saying that he had tweeting uh, that he had a huge announcement uh, to make at midnight, and all the fan girls just went crazy, and I'm just sitting here laughing um, at the possibility of this, like, oh my god, is this actually happening? Are we going to get a potential full-fledged aura reunion in free Eternal Summer? I was laughing rather than all the fan girls. Um, come to find out the next morning, he was trolling everyone. Uh, he just randomly announced that, I believe that he announced that he liked dogs, I think that was what it was. Um, and, but then he, uh, clarified in the next tweet that he wasn't so scary. Um, but he, he wishes luck to the person who actually is, uh, which we will get to in a minute. Um, but that was the most hilarious thing I've ever seen. He trolled the fenders so hard, and I'm just like, yes. That was amazing. I love him for it now. I'm like, yes. If I ever meet Travis Willingham in person, I am gonna be like, that trolling you did with Free Eternal Summer, that got me rolling on the floor laughing, just saying. <laughs> and you probably agree with me because he seems like a really, really cool guy. So, Saturday came around and um, I actually uh, did not expect this one. Uh, the announcement for these two, actually, on Saturday. Um, mostly because, A, I have not finished, well, really, yeah, mostly because I haven't finished season two free. Um, the, peop the people who were announced uh, Saturday was uh, Momo and Mitori, uh, two swim teammates of Rin's. Uh, I did not have any predictions for these two. What came out of it was rather interesting as well. Uh, Momo is going to be voiced by Jerry Jewell, who has been in Case Closed as Jimmy Kudo, who's Kyosoma in First Basket, um, as well as a variety of roles. Uh, and Nitori is actually being played by da -da -da, Josh Greeley. Now, uh, with Momo and Jewel, it's, uh, I think, gonna work. Uh, Momo, though, I've, as far as I can remember, it's been one, a couple of months or so since I've been watching the, uh, the wow, so I've been watching the series, and I think it can work. I feel like Momo uh, in the Japanese has a little bit of a lower baritone uh, kind of voice, if I remember right. Probably wrong, but um, I think Jewel will be able to pull this off very well. Um, as for Greeley and Nitori, um, because Nitori's uh, vocal quality, uh, his voice is similar to Nagisa's in a way. 
Uh, they have the same kind of tone and the same kind of pitch in a sense. So I'm glad to see Greeley in this. Um, it shows me that he definitely had potential for Nagisa, it just happened that Ayers was better for the role. Um, but he's still Nitori, and I think Greeley is still gonna knock it out of the park on this one. I ended up seeing uh, this happening. <laughs> yeah. Um, what to say about this? Um, it's kind of irritating to see something like this. I think of it as very childish. Um, I mean, again, my opinion on Vic Mignogna is Rin, is I don't see it working, but prove me wrong. I'm willing to change my opinion if you do well with the role. Um, for this uh, petition though, specifically, since it's about um, Vic's, basically his beliefs and his upbringing, thinking he's homophobic, um, as far as I know of, I have not seen any proof um, of this, any proof of his homophobia in the least. Here's my big take on it. Um, as an actor, you have the option of picking what you audition for. As an actor, you also have the right to decline roles if you are offered them, if you do not feel like you want to either be in that show, if you don't want to be that character anymore. You have the right to say no. In as weird as it seems, you have the right to say no in the entertainment world, whether it's theater or film, voice acting in this case. Um, I don't know what what happened, why, unless someone uh, tells me or shows me that he is a homophobe. I'm just gonna say this position is completely childish. Uh, it's unwarranted, it does not need to happen, and um, there was a tweet that I saw this morning, uh, no, this morning, wow, Sunday, I'm recording this on a Sunday, by the way, that I saw Sunday morning, uh, that's kind of related to this a little bit, and it's actually from Eric Vale, who I predicted to be Rin. Um, let me see if I can dig it up. It says, uh, a petition is the most, least effective way to show your displeasure mindless fan rage over your a show's casting backroom hijinks um and i agree with it it's utterly childish to do something like this and it's not going to change anything it just frustrates me to no end that this happened um again i don't know anything about whether or not the rumors of vic mignon's homophobia is true I think, what I think this is, is a confusion between beliefs and homophobia. Uh, because, no more beliefs and ignorance, excuse me. Um, because, I, if I recall correctly, he's, in the, he's an evangelist. Um, so, what it really might come down to is his beliefs and what he believes uh, in his religion versus blatant ignorance. Uh, I don't want to go into a huge heated discussion about this. Um, I'm just going to leave it at the fact that I believe this petition is very childish and it's unwarranted. Again, I'm going to stick to the opinion of I don't think Vic, Vic, Vic Mignogna fix, fits this role. Holy crap words. I don't think he fits the role of Rin, but I'm willing to let him prove me wrong. That's all I'm going to say on this matter. So back to casting. Um, with the Saturday announcements for Momo and Nitori, uh, Funimation mentioned that Sosuke and Go were to be announced the next day, as well as a few other rules. Um, so, of course, Sunday came around, Sosuke and Go were the two prominent ones to be announced, but there was still a handful being announced as well. Obviously, Travis Willingham is not Sosuke, based on his wonderful trolling. Um, so that didn't happen. With Go, there was another OS actress that I thought could fit the role, and that's actually Cherami Lee. Now, um, Cherami Lee, you may recognize from Fairy Tale as Lucy, uh, from Sword Online as uh, Asuna. Hooray! I was wrong on both fronts. Um, for Sosuke, um, instead of Travis, Will my prediction of Travis Willingham, uh, instead we finally, we finally have. Ian Sinclair hanging out in the series. 
Um, very excited for this one. It's definitely going to be interesting and fun for him to do. Again, I need to finish season two to see how well it's going to fit, but I don't see any issues with it. I just think it's going to be a fun time for Sinclair being a part of this, because as far as I know of, He's not worked, again, I think I mentioned this, he's not worked on a show like this before, um, as far as I can recall. So this is going to be a fun one. For Go, the announcement for Go was Jamie Marhi. Now, Jamie Marhi, um, you may recognize her. She is one of the Thompson sisters from Soul Eater. Patty? Or Liz, maybe? I get them mixed up all the time. She's also... Panty from Panty and Stocking with Gardabelt. Um, she's also the narrator for Hitalia. So she's done quite a bit. Um, with this one, it's definitely interesting to see. Um, considering Go and her personality and some of her mannerisms um, and her obsession with muscles, it's definitely going to be fun to see Marky pulling off the obsession with muscles. That's going to be a fun one to see. I think I can see this working. Uh, I feel like... I feel like it's gonna work. Um, I'm very excited to see this happening because it's gonna be fun and hilarious uh, with those very obsessive muscle moments. Um, some of the other, I need my laptop friendly for this one. Some of the other announcements, um, there was at least five more characters announced. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but I am gonna at least announce who's playing them. Uh, we have Christopher Sabat uh, taking on a role, Robert McCollum taking a role, uh, Micah Solasad finally hopping in there, uh, as well as Clifford Chapin uh, taking on another, a role as well. And there was also the announcement of Caitlin Glass as Amikata. I finally got one right. I got one right. Holy mother of God. We also found out on Sunday about the APR director and the adaptive scriptwriter. Um, I'm gonna start with scriptwriter. It's Tatum. Um, he's taking on the scriptwriting role for this one. So I don't have a problem. I think it's gonna work. Obviously he's gonna adapt it really well. He's, he's gonna be good. Um, ADR director. This is the interesting one. Um, it's Jerry Jewell, which could explain a couple things um, to me. Jerry Jewell, uh, in terms of his uh, directing work, uh, with Funimation. Um, the only ones I th off the top of my head that I could think of that I've seen, uh, Kami-sama kisses one of them and Blood Sea. Uh, the two of them, I believe, he doesn't have a lot actually of directing credit under his name, um, but those two specifically, I've seen those and um, Blood Sea was good, it was decent. Uh, Kami-sama kiss, I loved it, it was hilarious, it was great. Um, so I have no issue with Jerry Jewell as a director. Um, it's not to the point where it's like a Mike McFarland and a scenario like uh, Attack on Titan with Bryce Pappenbrook as Aaron and me having complete faith in McFarland with making this work. Um, it's not at that point for me yet with uh, Jewel, but um, for the case of uh, Hapricorn and Mignogna specifically. Um, but we will see how this goes. I feel like he's gonna do pretty good with it. Um, I've at least seen one more romantic comedy, uh, funny kind of work, and one more serious. I've at least seen both sides of the spectrum in terms of his directing work. And I feel like, since this one's kind of in the middle, I feel like it's gonna work. Um, with Tatum as scriptwriter, it's definitely gonna help a, little, a lot more. Uh, so I feel like this will be good. Overall, I would say, you have a lot of veterans in here, and the cast is definitely appealing to a specific audience, considering um, out of the five uh, major characters, only one of them was not involved with Oron. Um, so there's definitely a certain audience and a certain demographic this show was heading towards, uh, which is painfully obvious. But I feel like overall, it's gonna work. Um, I feel like this is a good, decent cast. Again, with Jerry Jewell directing it, and specifically with Habercorn and Mignogna as Haru and Rin, that's going to be the tricky area um, to me to try and deal with. Um, but I feel like with Habercorn, I feel like it can work. Mignogna, 
I still don't think it will, but again, prove me wrong, sir. That's basically about it for today. And let me know in the comments what you think about the casting, uh, who you believed was gonna be cast in the show, uh, your predictions, what you thought, um, how you felt about some of the announcements, how you felt about some of the um, things like Travis Willingham trolling the ever-loving crap every out of everyone, the petition against Vic Mignogna, which on that one, again, be civilized and nice about it. Please, I don't want to have to break things or kill things with fire. Please don't do that to me. Um, and I think that's it for today. So, uh, yeah, until next time, Otaku on, my friends.